Hello. Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Someone on Instagram asked me in a DM to do Caramel Sutra by Ben & Jerry's, so that's what we're gonna do. So, Caramel Sutra, what is it? It is half tub caramel ice cream, half tub chocolate ice cream with chocolate pieces with a really sticky caramel core. Cord ice creams at home take some work, so if you're ready, let's go. We're gonna start with the caramel ice cream. This is nice and easy, and I'm gonna use a really, really good ingredient here, which is Sosa Dolce de Leche powder. Um, so if you don't have that, then I'll give you an alternative in the description. But for now, we're gonna put our milk in the pan. We're gonna add in our sugars, which has got our stabilizer in there, and then add in our Dolce de Leche powder, which is in place of the milk powder. Once it's all combined, you're gonna take it off the heat, pop it in a container, add in your cream, and then put that in the fridge to chill down for four to five hours. Whilst your caramel base is in the fridge, we're gonna work on the chocolate ice cream half. And for this one, it's a very simple kind of box standard chocolate ice cream. I've gone with a lower fat content cocoa powder from Dazan, really nice flavor, 10% fat content. Much in the same way as any other chocolate ice cream, start with your milk, add in your sugars with your stabilizer, your milk powder, finally add in your cocoa powder and make sure it's completely dissolved into your base. Might take a while. If you do struggle with things like that, I recommend you combine your milk powder, your cocoa powder and your sugar all together. Stir that and then put that all in your milk together. It will dissolve much easier. Once that has all completely dissolved, you're gonna take it off the heat, put it in a container, again, add in your cream, give it a nice stir, make sure it's all completely combined, and then put that one in the fridge to chill down. On to the caramel bit. Now, obviously, your ice cream bases are in the fridge for a good few hours, because, you know, that's just how long they bloody take to cool down. Caramel takes a while to make. We're gonna start with a wet caramel. So that means we're gonna add our sugar and some water into a pan, and we're gonna to start to bring those up to temperature. What that temperature is, I'll put a link to sugar temperature scales in the description below. But really, if you're doing this at home, all you need to be aware of is the color. So you're looking for a deep amber color. Once it's at that stage, you're gonna turn the heat off, add in your butter, be careful, because it will spit. And then once the butter is completely melted into the sugar liquid, you're gonna add in glucose liquid. That will help with the freezing point depression and make sure that you get a really sticky caramel in your ice cream. Then once your glucose is melted into the base, you're gonna finally add the cream, make sure it's nicely stirred in, dissolved and everything's emulsified, and then pop the whole thing in a container to chill down to fridge temperatures. Onto the churny churny bit. We're gonna start with the chocolate ice cream. So get that one in your machine going. Whilst it's churning, you're gonna take some of your semi-sweet chocolate. It's a 50, 56% chocolate. Get it chopped up and you're gonna put it in a little pot because when your chocolate ice cream is almost ready, you're gonna add all of that in and make sure it's nicely combined. And then you're gonna take a good two to three large spoonfuls of the ice cream and put it in your tub. But you're only gonna put it on the one half. You're gonna keep the tub on the side and you're gonna put some cling film or plastic wrap over the top, put the lid on and store it in the freezer on its side. You're gonna leave it in there probably for about three quarters of an hour and do that with all the tubs so all your chocolate ice cream gets loaded into their respective tubs on the side in the freezer. Now we're gonna move on to the next stage. So after three quarters of an hour in the freezer with the chocolate ice cream half, you're gonna churn your caramel ice cream and there's no add-ins in this, so it's straight caramel. And once it gets to the stage you're gonna take it out of your ice cream machine, you're gonna start taking your tubs out of the freezer and pop the caramel into the other half of the tub. Again, tap it down, make sure those voids are filled, pop some cling film or shrink wrap over the top and pop them back into the freezer upright this time. 
So after a few hours, you're gonna need to keep an eye on the ice cream because you don't want it to go too hard in the freezer. Now, I fell asleep and completely forgot to do this stage. So I had to do it the day after. That was a massive mistake on my behalf. So this is what I had to contend with. And along with that, I also threw away the tool that I use for doing cores. You know, just why, why not make life harder for yourself when you can. And I managed to find a semi-transparent or semi-rigid tube to use to core out the ice cream. This was not going well. After leaving it to soften up for 30 minutes on the counter, I finally managed to get the tube into the middle of the tub and was able to load the caramel in. Now, if you do this the same day, after an hour or two in the freezer, you will be fine. You can just push your cylindrical tube into your ice cream tub, everything else will push out the way and you can load the caramel in. Don't do what I'm doing here because it just makes a bloody mess. Anyway, let's see what it turned out like. A lot of parts to doing cord ice creams. You know, Ben and Jerry's have got all the toys that you could ever imagine for doing this. You know, they, they do two different fillers. Actually, it's one that's combined into two nozzles, two heads, and they put the thing in and it releases the ice cream exactly the same way. Then they've got another one with the caramel that goes into the middle of those ice creams. They're still relatively soft at this stage. It all does it in one. It goes down a thing, they put the lid on, done, finished. You can't do that at home. You don't have that at home. So when Kylan on Instagram asked me to make this ice cream, I was like, yeah, I've done cord ice creams before. No worries. Let's just bash this one out. Done. Yeah. I fucked up. So let's see what it turned out like and, and we'll go from there. I mean, scoop in, scoopage. It's not too bad. I've done worse. It's got a nice caramel core. The, the caramel ice cream was, I, I you know, I'm a, I'm a spoon licker. When I make an ice cream, I will eat all the remnants that's in the ice cream machine. Why not? But the color of the chocolate ice cream is good. Lots of chocolate flecks, nice core. Let's eat some of this, shall we? That is bloody good. That caramel, let me let me get it out of the cupboard. Hold on. This stuff, child locks, you know, if you're if you're a parent of a young child, you'll know what that's all about. This stuff is magic. It creates a, a caramel ice cream that you just can't recreate at home. Oh, it smells so good. Now, first time I used this, I just wasn't paying attention and I used it as well as the milk powder. And that, that's all wrong, because that's what it is. It's caramelized milk with sugar in it. Use it instead of milk powder to create a caramel ice cream. And it's perfect. It's perfect caramel ice cream. Shut my phone up. It's got a really nice smell. The texture is perfect. It's got the right amount of sweetness. That is the best caramel ice cream I've had. The chocolate ice cream, I've used a lighter fat content, cocoa powder. Like I said, it's the brand is the Zan. Um, it's not, I've gone for that one because it's not quite as deep and punchy chocolate. So if you're making chocolate ice cream, you want all that flavor. But when you're having something like this, you want to be careful that you have one flavor that doesn't overtake the others. So I've used a lighter fat cocoa and it works perfectly well. Nice little chocolate flecks in there. They're not too sweet. They're not too sharp. They're really, really good. That caramel, ping, that caramel is still really soft glucose syrup. That is what's done that. And this is, after all this time, you can just be left with, oh, I'm gonna eat that later. You're just left with all of that goodness. Yes, cores are hard work. Are they worth it? I think so, because it, 
ice cream is about the whimsy and the emotion of eating it. It shouldn't just be take a boring tub of one flavor and scoop, unless that's what your thing is. You don't like these multi-flavored ice creams. For me, I like to take a tub of ice cream and, and enjoy that emotion of going through different things in the tub. You know, the, the emotion of the caramel, because it's really sweet, still really soft, it's silky, it's smooth, it's heavenly. The caramel ice cream is really nice and it sits on your tongue, it lingers forever. The chocolate ice cream is sharper and then you've got those bites of chocolate in there as well. It's a perfect combination. And thanks again for our subscriber and hit me up on a DM on Instagram to request this flavor. It's been on my radar for a while. I've just not got around to doing it. So I'm really, really glad that I was pushed to do it. So give this one a try. Don't leave your ice cream to freeze overnight before you do the core. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.